I'm 47 years old. This means that I'm a member of the Generation X, which is between the baby boomers and the millennials. As children, we experience the consequences of the significant increase of the, diver the divorce rate in our society. As teenager, we witness the rise of the HIV epidemics. As, and as adult, we are mostly known as cynical individuals. And, and honestly, on most days, it's hard not to be cynical. We're surrounded by so many lies, deception, and broken promises. We know, we will know that every politician are running to defend the middle class, but as soon as they're elected, they implement policies uh, to protect the wealthy. Uh, leaders are preaching one thing in public and do the complete opposite in private. And letters and sensationalism has become more important in our media than truth and content. So when someone shows up to proclaim a new message of hope and transformation, we tend to be, at best, very skeptical. Abraham and Sarah obviously are not members of Generation X. Still, when I read their story, I feel some sort of connection. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, of chapter 12 in the book of Genesis. God shows up in their life with an amazing promise. Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, says the Lord. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So Abraham and Sarah, went through when, wherever God led them. And as we meet them today at the beginning of chapter 18, their situation is not as fantastic as they might have expected. For several years, our couple have traveled across many lands and kingdoms without finding a place to call home. And above all, the promise of an offspring never materialized. They remained childless despite God's assurance. So one day, <laughs> so one day, when Abraham was sitting uh, at the entrance of his tent, he saw three strangers. He rushed to these men and invite them to come to eat and rest. And Abraham offered them the best in ancient Near East uh, courtesy and hospitality without knowing that one of them was God. And after inquiring about Abraham's wife, one of the guests declares, I will surely return in due season, meaning next year. And your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And notice here, not may, but shall have a son. And as she was listening from inside her tent, Sarah began to laugh. Yes, Sarah laughed. And her laugh was not one of uh, joy or relief from the cultural stigmata of being chi a childless woman in a very patriarchal society. No, 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 no. Her laugh was rooted in disbelief. It was a cynical laugh. Oh, Sarah was aware that men are good to brag about their virility when they're among themselves? Yeah, still she knew better, okay? This pregnancy thing sounds ridiculous because she was beyond childbearing age. Biology facts cannot be denied. There were, so, there were no conceivable ways this could be. It made, it made as much sense that saying, I don't know, if I tell you, 
that all the staff will leave at the same time, but everything will be fine. <laughs> what would be your answer? You know, yeah, ha, 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 ha. Easy for you to say. You're not the one who have to deal with the matter, eh? No. Sarah left at this improbable promise. And she laughed so hard that God asked, did I hear Sarah laugh? And Sarah replies something like, no, no, Lord, I did not laugh when you said maybe the most stupid statement I ever heard in my whole life. Of course, of course I will have a child. My husband is too old to do what needs to be done to get me pregnant, and I'm myself also old, but yeah, sure, it will happen. And even if you made this promise many, many, many years ago, and I never saw the beginning of its fulfillment, I will trust you that time. Why not? <laughs> and to Sarah's unbelief and skepticism, God replied, is anything too difficult for the Lord? And that day Sarah's answer was surely, yes. However, as we continue to read the story, Sarah bore a son from Abraham in the following months and called him Isaac, which means in Hebrews, he laughs. And for centuries, is anything too difficult for the Lord has been in our churches a mantra we often repeat. When confronted to a challenging situation that seems to be issueless, we like to remind ourselves that nothing is impossible to God. It's like in the gospel according to Matthew, when Jesus declares, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. So my friend, let us pray, 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 and pray. If God can grant Abraham and Sarah a child despite their old age and barrenness, let us have faith that God can do the same for us. Nothing is too outside of the ordinary for the Lord. Ask and you shall receive. Oh, this is very inspirational, oh yeah especially for regular churchgoers, because we like to believe that God's promises are true. However, what do we say to those whose prayers are not necessarily answered? What happens when your spouse is not healed from this ter terrible or terminal disease? How should we react? when a loved one struggling with an addiction assure us for the 50th time that this time is over it or she's on top of it. What should we believe if despite all our prayers and deeds we cannot conceive a child of our own? What does it say about your faith? What does it say about God's faithfulness? Many years ago, I encountered a man whose father was a drunk and violent. And as a child, he reached out to his local clergy person who told him to pray so God can change him, which never happened. So what do you think his reaction was when I said that I wanted to become an ordained minister? And who can really blame him? Because if God is love, why is life has to be such a mess? What did he do to deserve all of this? Hmm. Why his answer was not answered? His prayer were not answered. I can, as you can see, is anything too difficult for the Lord can turn to be a very harmful statement for some. When we put all our faith in the fulfillment of our prayers, we might end up profoundly disappointed. Because God is not some sort of a 
vending machine, granted fa granting favor and devotion, blessing to those who put the right amount of prayers and devotion in some sort of cosmic slot. This is not how it works. However, we can still believe in God's faithfulness. Because despite all the evidence pointing to the contrary, God never forgot nor abandoned Abraham and Sarah. Through all the trials and tribulation, God remained present and gave them hope, the reassurance, and the strength to go on. Oh, they doubt, they question, they struggle, of course, and yet they continuously felt God's presence at their side, and eventually they discover that God was as much in the fulfillment in the, of the promise than in the journey itself, the journey leading to it. And sometimes we're invited to change our perception and, and open ourselves to, to all the signs surrounding us. God is present in our life, and, and we know, experience taught us that God is present often in the most unexpected places. We often encounter strangers in our neighborhood, uh, reach out to visitors in our churches, or, or talk to children in our communities, and suddenly this, this word, this, this idea emerge in our mind, in our souls, and we discover that we can open ourselves to unexpected new possibilities. We can change our mindset. And this can allow us to go beyond our pain, our grief, our disbelief. We can even come to believe in a God that does not necessarily meddle in human affairs, requires our constant devotion, or expect the right numbers of prayers every day, but still love us and care for us. Honestly, on some days, it's difficult not to be cynical. It is difficult not to be convinced that all this God stuff is just wishful thinking. Nevertheless, and when we expect it the least, we are reminded that God's promises are true. As the story of Abraham and Sarah teaches us, we're all invited to go. We're all invited to journey with God. And while we know from experience that our prayers and demands are not always necessarily met exactly when we want it and how we desire it, we can be assured that something will happen that something will change. And often, it will start by ourselves. We can believe that God will never forget us or let us down, no matter our doubts, no matter what we do, no matter how loud we laugh. Amen.